Oh, uh, hello, viewer. Um, today I was, you know, looking at my desk and, you know, looking through all of the mess of cables and whatnot that gives me a two-screen MacBook with, yeah. When I, I looked down there and right next to my Bluetooth headset, I, I found this. And I said, now what could this be? It, it looks like an iPod. But there was no backing on it, so I couldn't tell whether it was a 6th generation or a 5th generation. So, so I turned it on, and I looked at it, and I said, Oh, God! It's one of those ugly 5th generation iPods. Why is it just on my desk randomly, plugged into my computer? How could I not notice that? Then I looked over to my left, and I noticed that I had a Microsoft keyboard and a Microsoft mouse. And and then under there I found a Wacom tablet, but that's that's aside from the point. So so I, I looked at this person and I said, Why? Why are you so incredibly ugly? Why? I am gonna give you a makeover. Before you do anything on your computer, make sure you do this. Go to settings. Then go to, where is that, uh, reset all settings, click on it, and then click on reset, okay? Then choose your language, and now the last thing that you have to do is go to settings, then go to, where is it, go to main menu, and go to the bottom, and then where, right where it says shuffle songs, make sure that that is off, okay? So that your main menu looks like this, okay? Just make sure you do all that before, otherwise this UI hack, if you will, will not work. Hello, and welcome to yet another Ponage tutorial. On this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to hack your iPod, but this time using a Mac. I've never seen a tutorial like this on YouTube, so one could call me a pioneer of iPod hacking on a Mac using YouTube. Anyway, first off, make sure you have a 5.5 generation iPod and make sure that you've followed all of the steps that I told you to in the beginning of this video. Um, so, well, you could have a 5 generation iPod, it's just I'm using a 5.5 generation iPod, so if you don't know if you have a 5 generation or a 5.5 generation, look it up on Wikipedia, okay? Anyway, so, um, so first thing you want to do is plug in your iPod. Well, first off, quit iTunes. Quit iTunes. There we go. Force quit. Force quit. There we go. So, first off, quit iTunes. And then... Plug in your iPod and make sure that it doesn't open iTunes automatically because if it does, that's not good because you can't have iTunes open. And thank you very much, iTunes, for opening up again. So, quit iTunes, make sure it is not open. Um, okay, so once you've done all that, plug it in your iPod and stuff, you need to download some software, some freeware, but it's still so. Anyway. Um, it's called AlterPod, and um, I'm pretty sure this was intended for a uh, power PC, um, and that would obviously not be Leopard, but it works on Leopard, surprisingly enough. Um, so yes, download AlterPod, and uh, once you've done that, uh, you know, extract it, put it in your application folder, do whatever you want with it. Um, actually, one, one little uh, tidbit of info before you do this. Uh, AlterPod cannot be downloaded from the developer's site because it is down. So use, um, you know, Mac Update or I think it's on Softpedia too. Now, um, now I'm going to download a UI, a customized user interface, um, from DrivenDesign.us, which is a good site for iPod UIs. I'm just going to be using the uh, Touch UI, which will change your iPod so that it looks like an iPod Touch 
which is pretty cool. Um, and then go to the bottom and click on the 5.5 generation download. If you're using the 5th generation, do that, but I'm not responsible for any uh, things that go wrong with your 5th generation iPod. Anyway, so download it, and now make a nice little folder with uh, iPod in, and put your zip file in it, and then unzip it, and there you go. There's your like, this little bin file, which is the file you're going to be using. So, make sure once again, iTunes is not open, because if it is, bad things happen. So, then open up AlterPod, and wait for it to bounce on the dock, and then it should open. Now, I'm using Leopard, and guess what happens? Uh-oh, Apple script error. Ignore it. It works anyway. So... I don't know if this is actually a crucial thing. I don't think it is, but I've noticed that it works more if you just click that. It it doesn't really make sense. Okay, so um, you're in AlterPod. It looks really confusing. There's so many things that make no sense, but you really only have to do one simple thing. Under the Restore tab, click Choose, and then give it a minute and then go to your desktop and then go to your folder that you made iPod and then go to your zip file your zip file and then, no not your zip file, go to your unzip file and then click on the dot bin file okay so click on choose and now if you're lucky when you click on restore no error will come up for some reason, I've had errors come up, and uh, I just try like 10 more times, and then it works, but, you know, whatever. So, then it says this, okay? It says this, and it's going to take maybe 10 minutes for it to work. Maybe less. I don't know. And, um, yeah, so now we just wait it out. Wait it out. Wait it out. And, um, yeah, if an error happens, try it again. So... I'll turn it back on when it's finished. Oh yeah, just a little update. This is actually something that's pretty funny. Um, when it's restoring, the the way that you know that it's stopped, that it's finished, um, is surprisingly enough an error message. And uh, when that error message comes up, that actually means that it's finished restoring. Uh, at least on Leopard. I don't know what it's like on other operating systems because Leopard's the best. Anyway, um, so when you get an error message after a couple minutes, if you get an error message after 30 seconds, no. Then something went wrong. If you get an error message after like 10 minutes, then that means that your, what should we call it, your, your iPod UI has been changed and then you just uh, eject your iPod. Like, with your devices thingy. Another way you can tell that the restore is finished is that this, wait for it, wait for it to focus, come on, you see that little loading thing? If that stops and you get an error message after like 10 minutes, then the UI change did work, okay? Okay, so I got the error message after like 3, 4 minutes, and then I clicked on OK, and it still says it's restoring the firmware, but it's not. It's really not doing anything. Um, a way you can check, well, uh, yeah. If the loading thing that I just talked about stopped on your iPod, then you're okay to go, okay? Then it's, you're good to go. If it's been three, three to 10 minutes and your iPod loading thingy on the upper left-hand corner has stopped, then you're good to go. So now, just open up a finder window and go to your iPod and click on eject. 